Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Andre. Like Christina, I'll be presenting Hacking Printers 10 years down the road. Uh, I'm glad to be here in Lucerne and at this conference, very nice. So, let's get rolling. A uh, few, few words about myself. If you, uh, I, I'm generally interested in security, RFIDs. If you played with my fair classic, you must have probably use MFAC, which is my very classic universal kit, which I wrote. And then I moved to, to printers. Um, okay, a small disclaimer uh, put here to just make sure that it's my own views and <coughs> whatever you do with whatever is presented here is your own risk or your own bricks <laughs> in printers. Okay, so just we, this is the agenda which we'll go through. We'll, we'll see some bits of history and present about uh, hacking printers. Uh, we'll be checking the motivation. Why uh, would someone uh, want to hack printers? Um, we'll then see the market profile, wh what is there to be hacked and what are the avenues. And then we'll, we'll go to how and where, like avenues and techniques on hacking printers. And then we'll Close, uh, wrap it up with some sum, uh, summary, some solution, possible solution and questions. Okay, so it started around 2002, at least publicly. The, the first public research was done by Fenelit and Felix. It basically disclosed some PGL vulnerabilities which are still there, like 10 years down the road, and uh, because it's spec and uh, protocol vulnerabilities, uh, but they, uh, the research was mainly uh, done on HP printers and there were a lot of tools and proof of concepts presented. Then there was another article by some anonymous Lobotron. Uh, also, he discussed like um, in a broader uh, sense uh, the vulnerabilities in uh, printers, like how they're being programmed, how, how they work, what are about the article was mainly uh, aimed at hacking uh, cartridges, okay? And basically, <coughs> uh, the idea behind this article was just to tweak cartridges, but anyway, it's a good reading from 2002. Then this, this idea of hacking printers somehow went down, and then it reappeared in 2006 by Iron Geek. Uh, he, put <coughs> he put up a talk and some uh, wide uh, page uh, discussing various aspects of security of printers. It, it covered like default passwords, telnet, SNMP, FTP, HTTP, uh, many other things which you usually are there in a printer which you might not think about this, right? So <coughs> basically it show, uh, put, put, put a lot of light on the broad aspects of a printer which you think is just printing paper. It has much more inside. <coughs> then again, four years, uh, it goes into the shadow, and again after four years, uh, this topic reappears. Like in 2010, when I started the research, uh, and some uh, guys from France presented some topic on uh, unpacking and reverse engineering firmware from Lexmark printers. Basically, it's some Lexmarks are uh, Linux-based operating systems, <coughs> and Basically, they showed how to debug, how to find uh, a string and buffer overflows vulnerabilities in other, one of the models. Um, then, in 2011, two guys from US started completely different uh, approaches to printer hacking. Basically, one of them is printers gone wild, uh, which basically tries to abuse. <coughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, tries to to abuse the PGL specification. I'll go uh, about PGL and all the terminology a little bit later. Basically, it tries to do a uh, encrypted distributed file system over the publicly accessible printers or privately accessible printers. Basically, what it does, printers have their own file system uh, ac uh, accessible through PGL. And basically, what it does is take your file and then spread to the printers, right, and encrypts it. So you, you can store your uh, confident information on various printers and then you reassemble it back. And basically, it has like some tools, like printfs is the core module. It has like printfs scanner and so on. Just take a look; very interesting. <coughs> uh, 
then uh, a completely different avenue uh, taken by uh, Perkis. Uh, he uh, basically tries uh, put together a kit uh, w uh, which tries to harvest the information stored on the printer because, for example, printers, uh, a lot of them have uh, configuration for POP3 uh, emails, uh, L LDAP passwords, and so on and so on, and they're basically accessible on the admin interface, and most of them are stored in clear text. So basically what this uh, toolkit does <coughs> is it identifies the model, you just fire the, the specific tool, it goes, grabs the, the pages, parses, and it gets the password. So you can, basically it's like first step of penetrating the network because you want LDAP passwords for a domain and so on. And sometimes pop free passwords, like uh, match uh, user passwords and so on and so on. Like very interesting uh, implications of first stage attack on printers. <coughs> okay, so basically why would the motivation behind hacking printers, uh, why would someone hack printers? Basically the idea is that when you have a printer, right, you, uh, most of people tend to think it's, it's, it's about only like a piece of uh, equipment with, which prints some sheet of paper, right? <coughs> but it's like a full-blown computer and even more because it usually has uh, like various uh, proprietary or non-proprietary uh, hardware extensions, but in the same time it's like a full board with uh, more or less conventional uh, <coughs> architecture like power PCs, uh, arms and so on and so on. It has uh, network access, it has memory, it has hard disk, it has everything. Basically it's a, com it's a computer which you, you can <coughs> play with. Some even run virtual machines and all kinds of weird software which is there from late 80s I think. <coughs> like when uh, the printers uh, industry started developing these, these standards like PGL, PCL, PostScript and so on and so on. <coughs> So nowadays, they, they keep evolving. They, they don't fix the, the security problems, but they keep evolving, ending and new, new, new stuff as new technology comes out. They add new stuff to the printers, like uh, swipe cards, RFID cards, uh, fingerprints, LDAP passwords, and so on. Basically, these are very interesting uh, security <coughs> details, which, for example, harvesting them would, would give you like, a lot of uh, information asset. Uh, after an attack on printer. And given the printers are o uh, usually overlooked from security perspective and security assessment and penetration tests, okay, not lately, they started to, 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 to be done, but g in general speaking. So it's a very good and easy target to get everything in one package, quick, no, no uh, dirt, and so on. <coughs> so an another example would be, for example, if you're uh, into espionage or whatever, or an attacker is in, into espionage or uh, why taking the trouble of um, bypassing several uh, network uh, security perimeters, um, accessing an encrypted uh, file system on somebody's computer, trying to get an encrypted file, uh, crack it, when you, for example, can malware a printer and occasionally documents, even confidential, they get printed, right? So when that <laughs> printer uh, document is being sent to the printer, taking it from the printer directly, directly unencrypted, plain text, like it's, you, you avoid a lot of red flags and a lot of trouble just by going to the, to the, to the right target, right? You avoid everything. <coughs> and it's not science fiction because eventually at the end of the day, like even the encrypted uh, documents, even the ones which use secure extensions, and are being encrypted over the wire, uh, so they cannot be sniffed with Wireshark. At the end of the day, they get decrypted in a printer, right? <coughs> to be printed. So you get everything on the spot. You, you avoid like several <coughs> levels of encryption and protection just by uh, putting your, yourself in the right place in the printer. <coughs> okay, so. Another motivation is there is no, no, there was not so much information publicly available, and there's still not so so much information available regarding uh, printers or um, <coughs> protocols. Uh, and moreover, for 
pri uh, proprietary or private protocol. So for example, if, if you try to, to, to search for these keywords, which uh, basically appear very often in the printer firmware, you'll find not so many results. For example, you find six results, zero results, one result, and all these uh, commands <laughs> are proprietary commands over the PGL uh, protocol. Basically, they are used to upgrade uh, firmware on the printer. I'll go in more details later. <laughs> in comparison, for example, the PDF, like if you uh, start uh, searching for this PDF launch and DDS Stevens and so on, basically you find a lot of results. So the interest there is very high, and in, in some degree, a lot of those security issues got already addressed or are being addressed, or the issues are being raised already. However, for the printers, the, the visibility is still very low. <laughs> okay, so what, what we are talking about here is like the printer market, and somebody will say, okay, there's not so many printers, but uh, the idea is that, uh, okay, if you think about a uh, user level where he has like a cheap uh, a printer for 50 euro, you're not very interested in his pornography he prints, right? But if you are thinking about like big organizations like governments or uh, enterprises or uh, multinationals, or uh, uh, various other big organizations. They have like uh, fleets, fleets of printers, like thousands of them, hundreds. They're being managed through uh, fleet administration, like a special software which help them manage the printer because it's not like a piece of laptop you can carry. It's very, usually very heavy. So basically, the idea is there's a lot of printers out there. <coughs> and we are, we are talking about like, production of 24 million per year of, I, I would say, perfectly exploitable and easy targets. <coughs> and uh, the idea is that you, you get a lot of them out there. Okay, the, 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 the problem is the architecture and operating system and the hardware and so on is very fragmented. So this, this puts like uh, in, in a complication, the, the exploitability of them, but the idea is that there's still a chance you, 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 you might uh, own an organization because usually they go for uniform vendors. So if you own like uh, HP printers, you know that a given organization have like 200 HP uh, multifunctionals, you, you own, own them all, right? <coughs> uh, <coughs> Basically, some of quick misused scenarios is like, uh, Malware upload storage, as an example, uh, you, you saw the uh, print uh, FS toolkit I, I, I've talked about. Uh, you, you, you have like uncleanable command control because the idea is that those printers are not being very often patched or the patches are not very often issued. Okay, uh, the, the vendors they are not releasing so often the patches uh, because they don't know <laughs> or don't want to fix them. Uh, and the idea is. Uh, Basically, uh, we're, we're not being very well managed from the security perspective. And so you can go for cor corporate enterprise intelligence asset data theft or uh, espionage or, uh, okay, uh, whatever the scenario uh, you, you might want to think. The simplest is uh, permanently DOS it, like break it, and uh, you achieve, achieve only a, a few of the uh, or tip of the iceberg, what you could have achieved if you went uh, with more sophisticated attacks. But it's simpler to permanently dose it, so uh, there is no fun in it. <coughs> okay, uh, another idea which uh, <coughs> I I wanted to present is the okay from another perspective is like geolocation over MFPs. What is the idea behind it? <coughs> is usually the MFPs in large organizations are like very, <coughs> very um, non-movable assets. Like they sit somewhere and they sit very well, right? Uh, because we, it's very hard to, to move uh, 100 kilo or 200 kilo printers of, uh, day over day here and there. <coughs> so uh, they introduced some, uh, some specific protocols or extensions like Microsoft printer location tracking in Active, di uh, Active Directory, uh, or there are different, there are different uh, <coughs> pro protocols or specifications like DNS lock, which is not very used, uh, and uh, a new scheme by 
developed by ITF. Um, the idea is, <coughs> given that you have access to, to the data, uh, to location data of the printers, is like you, you can very well know where your malware is at a given point, right? So uh, you can see the printers as good reference points uh, geographically. So, for example, if you, wh when you <coughs> somebody spreads the malware uh, on IP address space, he doesn't know where he physically is. But uh, sometimes you want to restrict or you want to know where your ma malware physically is, right? Uh, for various reasons. So uh, printers are a very good indication where approximately you are. <coughs> so just an example is to, uh, based on Microsoft uh, printer location tracking uh, protocol and <coughs> data definition, for example, they have an example where they show how, how to set up on, uh, your PLT. And for example, they give uh, Victoria first floor, north, east corner. And for example, <coughs> it, you don't know what is Victoria, you don't know second floor, but that is, for example, a, a computer-based malware <coughs> getting access to, to this on a user PC. Like, can do a, a, a simple search, and basically they get the exact address, and the idea is, like, you know where your malware is, right? Uh, that's that's uh, an interesting idea which might be exploited. <laughs> and you'd be surprised basically how many of these things like are on the internet. Uh, and you see they have like uh, dean's office, receptionist office, so uh, our, our administration building and so on and so on. So you, you know where exactly you are. And you'll be surprised if I show you, this is like <coughs> Fermi National, Fermi National uh, Atomic Labor Laboratory, right? This is from Stanford, some security laboratory. <coughs> Some educational again, and okay, this is from CERN. Okay, so basically, uh, you 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 get some some point, and <laughs> some 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 of the administrator even put this on the internet, so you exactly know <laughs> where the printers are, so you don't have to do the dirty job, and know exactly where what kind of printer is there. Okay, so I've I've taken some publicly available Google Dorks and some other search engines results. I've tried to put them on the map. And <coughs> as you can see, for example, it's like a big number of at least what I found publicly available printers on the internet, right? And <coughs> you'd be surprised how many are there. It's like at some point Google Earth just cannot handle it, right? So, and you have everything from uh, firmware levels and so on and so on. So, you, you get my point. So, okay, this, this works for very well developed infrastructure countries, because if you go, for example, to Russia or Siberia, there's not so many things on the map, but for example, for Taiwan, for Japan, US, Europe, it's like full of them. <coughs> Right, so you, you have everything here. And it's like a big scary number of publicly available printers. And some of them are very expensive and some of the, them are very exploitable. <coughs> so, okay. Okay, you, you, you got the point. They're everywhere, basically. <coughs> okay, now, back to the printer jobs. The idea is, for example, there's many, many, many specifications, like uh, many specifications about printers. Uh, you can go look them up. Everybody came with his own, with his own, every vendor came with his own um, language, for, for example, how to render and how to receive the stream of data and how to print it. So, but there are a couple of uh, well-established protocols and specifications. Uh, uh, which is UEL, basically when you send a printer job uh, to, to, to a printer, when it sends, basically it puts this, it's like a small header. The UEL is called universal exit language and it's only one command language. Basically it's the escape character in hex followed by this magic string. And this means that a new job 
uh, is following in PGL specification. So whenever you want to start a new uh, PGL uh, command, basically you have to, to use this UEL. <coughs> PGL is printer job language, is developed by HP, and basically <coughs> it controls the uh, job separation, environment, status readback, device attendance, and file system commands, which I'll demonstrate later. There's also printer management language, it's like H more HP proprietary <coughs> language. It's used to query uh, SNMP values over the <coughs> printing stream, okay? So, for example, if you have a USB or Ethernet connection to a printer uh, and uh, the administrator disable the SNMP, you can use the PML, so basically you create a print job which will uh, actually get those values for you, <coughs> which I'll show also. There's also PostScript, which you know, uh, a language to, to describe graphic things. <coughs> There's also uh, PPD, is like uh, an extension to PS, basically to make easier the development of printers. They came with PPD files, uh, which you specify how, a, how vendors specify how a specific printer or what are the specific PostScript operations that printer support. So it's easier to write drivers for uh, the big mu multitude variation of printers. <coughs> There's also PCL. Basically, PostScript and PPDs are Adobe's uh, direction into printing, and PCL and GPDs is the counter alternatives uh, developed by HP. So that's why usually you have the drivers, you have like PCL or PS in their suffix, or usually only PS. So the one without anything is a PCL based, and the one with PS in, in the driver name usually it's PostScript. So what it means that the driver which you are, being ins you are installing will be creating if a, a post-script post commands or PCL commands, which it will embed into uh, PGL uh, wrapping <coughs> and send to the printer. Why, why is this so? Because some printers support only PostScript, some, some printers support only PCL, and some printers support both. Okay, the idea is about PGL is like, vulnerabilities. It's, it doesn't have uh, built-in encryption, it doesn't have encryption at all, so everything is <coughs> sent in clear text, and usually uh, any, anything which is security related, uh, a vendor takes uh, initiative and implement their own in-house crypto or obfuscation and so on and so on, which you see it's a road for trouble, and it's not very good from security perspective. So. For example, you can secure a job, for example, uh, PGL says that you can secure a job uh, not to be able to uh, picked up by anyone on the printer, so you can set a pin <coughs> when printing, and when that job goes to, to the printer, which has a keypad, it will not print the job until you enter the correct pin code. But the first thing is clear text, you can sniff it. Second, if you cannot sniff it, you can like brute force it's only 10,000 combinations, right? So again, this is not real security. It's like security in 80s. Okay. <coughs> now, uh, what I call the PGL parade is like uh, a demonstration of how everybody tries to uh, show their own glory. E every vendor tries to show their own glory in PGL programming. So they come up with various non-standard uh, keywords, which are basically an indication that there's a lot of obscure and unsecured things in the printers. <coughs> and I'll, these are the basic, for example, upgrade command, it's from HP. It's, it follows a binary uh, zip file or whatever proprietary format of a firmware upgrade, right? <coughs> not, very, not very secure. And Lexmark, like, uh, programming the engine or raster image processor. <coughs> uh, these ones are accessing or reading f or writing uh, on specific uh, browser printers <coughs> the hex address, right? Uh, so you can go directly to the other physical address space of that specific printer through a print job. Doesn't this sound interesting? Like you send a print job to the printer and you have <coughs> And there's also a lot of other obscure, like super user password, 
super user off, uh, shutdown, uh, printer config, browser firmware, firmware ready, firmware check, <coughs> and so on and so on. Like you can do uh, debug status, wireless scans, and so on. Uh, and all of these are non-standard, and it's road for trouble again. If you start dissecting the firmware, you'll see a lot of these, and these are only the tip of iceberg, because if you start following all of this section in a firmware, you'll see a lot of other clear text things or uh, debug symbols and so on, which gives you an indication of where it leads to. <laughs> okay? Uh, some other things, like uh, fax modules, we, uh, very interesting. <coughs> so, now, sh sh shown the, the theoretical part, it's like, now, how, how to actually get to, to, to the printers and how to plant that job, printer job, or how to craft it so you can actually do something with a printer with different from printing a document, right? This is what, what interests us most. Do something with a printer so it perform an action which is non-printing action. And usually uh, we want it to be malicious because if uh, we, we want to try to protect ourselves and detect those kinds of streams coming in, right? <coughs> so, basically, the how-to approach is um, we have remote-initiated printing, <laughs> locally-initiated printing. Uh, difference is some of the printing is being uh, initiated by remote parties, like an applet or a page, and local-initiated printing is like the printing is initiated on local machine by the local user, uh, consciously or unconsciously, right? <coughs> and a few, few other uh, details which I'll show later. <coughs> so the printing, I call it the printing payload exploit, is uh, Java, uh, Java applets have printing functionality built in, so you can print easier from Java. And basically it gives you, surprisingly, access to uh, to formatting the <coughs> print job the way you want. Basically, you are like, you, you can write your own kind of uh, print the printer driver in Java, right? Because printer driver is what, what, uh, what they do. They take, uh, given what you see, what, what you get specification in an editor, right? And the driver makes for you the PostScript or PCL stream which is sent to the printer and printer understands it. In, in Java, you can specify every bit of that stream. And this is very interesting because you can craft very interesting packets or very interesting print jobs <coughs> at very, very basic level. So I'll show you the demo. Uh, uh, can we, have, can we hold the questions to the end? Because I want to, to, to finalize the content and then we'll go with the questions. Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll put the speed a little bit up and it will be explained. So we have the target. Uh, everybody is able to see this? Uh, we have a target, uh, it's IP, it's a laser jet, no secrecy in this. Uh, we have the same IP, it's in ready status, we are in the admin interface. Uh, it doesn't matter for us to be uh, administrator of the web interface on the printer. The idea is that the user doesn't have to be an administrator to print a job, right? So, so or to print something on the printer. So, and we'll be doing our stuff on the printer job uh, stream level, not at the web admin interface. So we are pretty fine. We don't need any uh, super admin rights on the printer. <coughs> this one is just to show you the results. OK, so the device is, is ready. We have uh, the right IP. OK, and the idea is OK, we will be checking the printer. This is the name of our printer, doesn't matter. We can, yeah, so basically you can see this is, this, this was a, a PostScript based uh, uh, driver. You saw the PS in the driver name. 
And it's a Ethernet-based printer because the port is specified as IP address. So basically, what it means is the print jobs are sent over the IP, over Ethernet to the printer, not over the USB cable. And the, the 9100 is the usual, uh, it's called the raw, uh, raw HP or HP raw or different naming conventions. For this port, it's basically a, a TCP port where you connect, you dump your stream job if you have Telnet connection. But because we are like simulating that attacker which is over, doesn't have the Telnet connection, otherwise it could do more things. Uh, so this is the port where all the jobs are being sent by the small little uh, icon which appears in the sys tray. Usually when you print something, there's like a little icon which pops up. <coughs> okay, so. Okay, uh, I'll be showing you that uh, we, we are doing a file system directory list on the printer. I'm using Telnet to show you that uh, there is no file before the exploit. So basically, this is the directory list, dot, double dot, postscript directory, PGL directory. This is where usually the uh, fonts or data is being stored by the printer when it receives if uh, postscript or PGL. Uh, as a uh, safe device and web server. Pretty easy di directory structure. <coughs> okay. So we now simulate that uh, this is my, uh, my IP. It, I'm simulating that the user received the link to a malicious site, and here is an applet, okay? And the, you can the attacker can use any social engineering skills to make you open and print that page or that applet, right? You can say it's a free coupon, it's a, your tax, whatever. You saw the keynote, what kind of documents people receive uh, looking very valid and very legal. The same social engineering skills can be applied here. And the user comes and he, he, he wants or he is forced to, to, to print. Basically, now uh, a security warning appears that access to, uh, an Apple has uh, uh, requested access to the printer. Uh, usually if the user is expected to print something, this pop-up will not raise too much, too much suspicion usually because you, you pressed print, right? It's not that it popped up from, from the sky. So it's like the actions are correlated, so no, no big suspicion over here. And I'm not sure if everybody is able to see it. Here is like the small printing icon. It means the Java applet accessed uh, the printing subsystem and sent the stream to the printer. Okay. Okay, we are doing Telnet again, and we run the same the same command, dir list, and you see that a new file appeared here, right? So the the stream uh, made this goal, so it wrote a file to the internal file system of the printer. Okay, and. I'll exit the full screen because I want to speed it up, but okay. Uh, you see the contents of the, the screen is like PGL uh, file system upload. It means you, you upload from the printer to the, to the endpoint. Okay, so, so we, ha we have file uploaded. Uh, we, we can now do uh, pr printer display change. So. Basically, printers have small LCD, right? It has small LCD, and uh, usually it displays some message, like uh, replace cartridge, or printer is printing, or printer is ready, printer is sleeping, and so on and so on. And usually the web interface like replicates the same message here. So we can change that, uh, that display. It was used like a prank few years back, in 2006, after Iron Geek stock. But uh, you can uh, uh, use it as a 
an attacker can can use it as a social engineering step. Like you go to 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 a web page, it changes the applet changes the uh, message on the printer. Call this number for uh, origin support issue. He calls and then the second attack of social engineering takes place, like asking for password uh, and so on and so on. Right. So you basically, uh, for it seems uh, not very sophisticated, this feature. It can be abused in a very malicious way if properly social engineering work is being done on the personal uh, around the printer. Okay, so the user prints. Uh, we have, okay. And now if we refresh this screen, we see the LCD message, it got changed. So again, you can put a number there or an email, uh, email the password to this, whatever. It's like sky is the limit for imagination. Okay, and our printer is still alive, so the last uh, thing is we'll be resetting the printer and resetting in a orderly manner, meaning not, not crashing it by sending uh, an exploit string on, or so on. The idea is that uh, the reset is important. For example, if, if you do a, a firmware upgrade with malicious binaries inside it, you need to restart the printer orderly so that the firmware is being properly updated, right? So these reset commands are very precious because you want to remotely reset. Usually the printers are not being reset so often. They sit there, they are in sleep mode, uh, they are connected all the time, but they are not being reset too often. So it's a very useful command uh, to, to reset the printer. Not, not crashing, resetting. Because crashing and so you see that we, we sent a specific uh, job, print job, and instead of printing, basically our printer is not printing anything when, when the user prints from the applet. You can insert the, the valid looking document as well, not to raise suspicions, but not, nothing got printed. But the idea is that it's not necessarily to print something on the printer to be able to accomplish these tasks. Okay. So you see the, the printer went offline, it's restarting and so on. So this is this is for remote remote initiated printing. Uh, okay, we have 15 minutes left. Oh, uh, okay. The idea is this is <coughs> this is uh, what is called the PML printer management language. It's basically some commands uh, from working on HP printers. It's using PGL as it as its transport and what it's it is, it's like equivalent of this SNMP. So even if the administrator disables the SNMP on the network, the, the, the thing you can accomplish, the same action you can accomplish by sending this string. So it's 04, it's very well specified in the documentation. 04 is a set, uh, value, uh, object IDs, and so on and so on. So again, you can overcome. <laughs> now. Lo lo local initiated printing exploit is like uh, you send somebody a specially crafted Word document and uh, when the user prints it, uh, he, he also uh, gets those actions executed on, on uh, their uh, printer. So the, the actions of this demo is, are the same, meaning there's uh, there is file upload, there is uh, LCD change, and there is uh, also the uh, re reset. But they are accomplished by uh, printing specific pages in a sp uh, specially crafted document. And I'll show ho how to do this document. Basically, I'm, I'm doing the same dear list to show there is no, uh, no file. See, there is like no. I cleaned the file, and I am taking from the fresh approach. Okay. Now we have like uh, a special crafted document, three pages. Uh, printing page one will upload the file. Printing page two will change the uh, string on the printer. Printing page three will uh, reset the printer. If you print the entire document, 
it will uh, do all these three actions in one go, but I'm printing one page at a time to, to demonstrate actions of each page. There's no uh, visual basic ma macros involved, there's only specific things used for this. So you see, I print only page one. <laughs> okay. And I do the same, I do the same dear list, FS dear list. And you see that the file appeared over there, right? So it's the same result accomplished in, in different way. I'll, I'll not uh, go through the page two and three, it's doing the same because I want to present some, something else. Uh, I'll just show you how to, to do those documents. Okay, so basically, uh, there's uh, a functionality called uh, field codes. Basically, uh, when you have uh, when you have a date and time and a page number in, in a document, and it usually increments, what it is using in in the back in MS Word is field code. Basically, it's a specific internal uh, kind of. It's not a programming language, but you can read more on, on Microsoft website. Uh, uh, the idea is that they have various things about this field codes and one of them is print. Uh, basically, you can create a new field code by using this shortcut and you can see what field codes are in the document by selecting all text, pressing Shift F9 and you'll see those field codes appearing like with a gray background and it's like looking like a macro, but it's not a macro, it's like field codes, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, then, uh, what's interesting is that this print field code is uh, there from late uh, 80s or, no, okay, mid 90s, I think, uh, because initially the printers uh, required the uh, specific initialization commands to be sent uh, before uh, a print job uh, could be sent to it. So wh what was done was introduced this, like, it's like an escape, it's escaping uh, printer initialization commands, which it sends to the printer in, in raw. So basically, whatever you type in the field code of the print uh, field code is sent raw to the uh, printer. It's not being processed by the printer driver, right? So the idea if you want to, to, to send, if you want to send, let's say, uh, the file upload command, which I'll show you. This is the simplest, uh, the simplest PGL job to upload uh, uh, a binary on the file system print. Uh, so basically, you can dump it through Telnet. You can send it a row to the printer from applet, or you want to send it uh, uh, raw, unprocessed, to the uh, from uh, MS Word. So to send exact these bytes, you need to put this blob in uh, print field code. Otherwise, if you just put this text, this text will get rendered, and then you'll get only graphical operators. So it, you'll not accomplish uh, low-level things with... Okay, so I'll show you the... Okay, this is the well-known display thing. It's like PGL, set ready message, display, you set the message you want. These are the wrappers. It says it's a PGL job uh, and so on, PGL end job. And here you put PGL commands or you can put the graphical things like PCL and PostScript. Okay, and this is the restart. Basically, it's the same. We start the job, uh, job name, and we say, uh, I want to orderly reset an HP printer. It doesn't work on all models, uh, on all vendors, it's only uh, specific to HP, but it's good enough. Basically, all other vendors have almost the same things. Okay. Okay, uh, it's not quite easy to fix because it's like PGL design uh, thing. It's not that you apply a patch and these file system commands w w will be blocked. You cannot easily block because some printers rely on fonts to be downloaded to them and so on and so on, or some initialization. So it's very hard to to like block this. A paranoid solution would be like print everything through a virtual 
uh, filtering printer, like, you know, Qt PDF or something like this. Uh, you print first through a virtual printer. You get uh, uh, intermediate output, which is clean of uh, printer-specific malware, right? And then you print the clean the uh, file. However, the uh, downside is that, one, uh, you're never sure if the virtual printer driver is okay. It might be uh, malicious for your PC. Or let's say the printer driver uh, is fine, but uh, some document exploits the virtual printer driver uh, vulnerability and exploits your PC. So you're safeguarding your printer, but you exploit your PC. Uh, there's a balance. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll go very, very quickly. I have six minutes. Okay. Um, basically, uh, this this is part of um, uh, printer administration, uh, printer administration interface from HP. But every vendor has every big vendor has its own kind of implementation, and it's susceptible to XSS attacks. And uh, the idea is that usually only uh, admins log to, to, to this interface. Uh, and if you exploit, uh, and if that administrator is also a domain or power user or power operator on uh, the domain, uh, the implication is quite nasty. So there are a couple of XSSs in this tool called uh, HP Web Jet Admin, but in other they are present. So I'll be showing quickly how we usually is being Done. Oh, come on. Oh. Okay, so basically, you see that this is RFU, it's called RFU. It's a remote firmware upgrade. Uh, you see, everything is like uh, wrapped in a PGL upgrade command from HP. And there's like a binary blob. We don't care now what it is. And uh, it's, it has like comments, uh, PGL comment. And the idea is that uh, whatever the comment is, is put here, usually uh, this, uh, this software shows as, as in here, just to to show the administrator of the model, right? And the idea is that you just saw how it's done. You just put a comment field and put whatever you want. Just dump everything there and pray for uh, admin, uh, active domain, or active directory admins, or whatever you are aiming for. Um, and the idea is that uh, there are various tools to download these uh, remote firmware upgrades from HP, and they're use, using only HTTP, not HTTPS, right? So man in the middle is like piece of cake, and nobody suspects anything, right? Uh, you can put a valid looking PGL command, and then just insert the code, it goes through. Okay. Um, if everything else fails, you just uh, have, uh, have a nice, cute uh, binary, which is not in infectious for PC, it is not detected by malware for PC, but what it does, it connects telnets to port 9100 of the printer and infects the printer. And this, I don't know any uh, antivirus uh, vendor which detects like uh, malicious, uh, printer malicious code or things like this. So, okay, you download a nice flash game or a nice application, you just play it, uh, but it infects your printer, okay? Uh, and uh, another thing which you can be using is uh, when you do penetration testing, if you do this, um, that is, you, you can, and you have like a jailed environment, like a kiosk, right? You can uh, check if the kiosk is running administrator, uh, if the jailed environment is, is being run as administrator. And how you do this? Uh, for example, usually the printing is not uh, limited on the kiosk, even though they don't have printer installed, but they don't limit most of them. So you go, you select the default XPS driver thanks to Microsoft. Uh, you select print to file, you select whatever known path, and it just overwrite. If, if you are true admin, then the driver, which prints usually to, to, to the printer, will write the, the printing stream to that file. So you can denial of service, 
the host. Uh, second, if that doesn't give an error, uh, you might be having an admin, right? And it might wor be worth uh, putting more effort on exploiting that host. If it's not a, a high level user, then maybe it's not worth continuing exploiting. And second, you can fingerprint if it's Windows, uh, Windows 2K, you can play with different parts and so on and so on. So, okay. Now things we I found in in uh, some some of the printers like leaking sec secrets or uh, cryptographic information is like uh, root passwords and guess what? Crypt of password equals to this. So you perform a, a firmware upgrade and you get like you know the, your printer back to square one. Um, found encrypted private keys. And usually, for example, in a fleet of printers, if you, if you want to use HTTPS, right, you can turn it on and make the, make the printer uh, use HTTPS. Then usually they have self-signed certificates of the printer. And usually admins, or not usually, but some admins choose to uh, add those uh, certificates as uh, CAs to, to the host of the user, so he doesn't get a warning, okay? And you get uh, the point where I'm going to, you have the private keys, you have a certificate in the CA of the users. Well, yeah, so more things to come. The interesting uh, ways you can exploit just leaking a private key, it's like, uh, okay, fax exploitation, have two more minutes, yeah? Um, fax exploitation, basically, um, some some of the printers have fax modules, and uh, as I shown you at the PGL parade, or you can take the slides later and look it through. Um, uh, there's a fax command in PGL. So basically, you craft a document, or you when you do print tracing, or when somebody wants to exploit uh, a crafted print stream in documents or in penetration testing, you can put this uh, um, a fax command, and you can test whether they have uh, active uh, dial up and dial in connections, which are usually not very secure. And if you have a if if you have a dial in connection, that's quite bad for your network uh, or customer network. And basically, you can test whether they are using uh, uh, normal PSTN fax or uh, they are using FOIP or fax over IP uh, by uh, sending faxes to various international numbers and seeing the sender of the of the fax. Uh, if it's FOIP, it's usually something bogus. If it's traditionally, they'll have their own thing. And another, this is information harvesting. Basically, basically it's like reconnaissance. Uh, you can find more about uh, the, the enterprise in this way. But the other approach is money harvesting. A malicious user can abuse it, like having set up premium numbers, right? Uh, which charge like 100 euros per minute, whatever. Uh, they have accomplice. Uh, uh, and register a number, a local number where the enterprise has uh, their offices, um, send that kind of document, the fax is initiated, calling to a premium number, uh, the enterprise pays the bill, the <laughs> malicious user gets the money. Easy, right? So this is also one point to, to keep in mind when installing, configuring, penetration testing the MFPs with faxes. So this is the command set. It doesn't work on all of the devices, but you have to read the documentation and specific support. Okay. And the last, because I promised I'll be showing some sneak preview. Uh, okay, the sneak preview. And we are done because I'm over time. It's like, it's, and it's only half of the content which I have on this topic, unfortunately. Not not very well with time management. Maybe. Okay. Okay, so basically what we have here is like, I've put even some, uh, we, we ping the MFP, it's like, uh, we have it fine, we do the same trick, we connect to raw socket 9100, Okay, I will not be showing you exactly how it's done because it's part of the, uh, some other talk. 
Uh, but you see we have like a shell. Okay, I call it shell, but oh, it's somewhere somewhere where, there. It's like we are dumping specific uh, st stream to the printer and we get like a shell on the printer, which uh, have nice implications. Now, the, this is the special command number two, which I called it for this demo. Uh, basically, it's a physical operating system memory dumper, right? Embedded in a postscript uh, thing, okay? So in uh, in a PCL job, okay? So what what the idea is now? The, the okay. So you can see basically uh, it's a very specific uh, PGL and PCL uh, job, print job, crafted, uh, which we send to the printer. Uh, we have access to the um, operate physical and operating system uh, memory. And basically, I've dumped only a part of memory. And the specific offset where I started dumping, you see, is uh, possibly the web administrator uh, executable and modules, because it has like some things which are from HTTP things and so on and so on. Uh, but it's uh, where something says about laser writer. Wait just one second. Yeah, laser writer and so on. So basically, it's like very deep implication. Once you can dump the memory, you can dump the file system through a print screen, uh, uh, not print, uh, printing stream. Then its the implications are very interesting and accessing. Uh, okay, they uh, printers have like very uh, strange memory management. They don't have uh, DEP and so on and so on. So if you start reading or writing a specific addresses, um, uh, they just do a general protection fault, GPF, you know, 80s, like sound like 80s, a complete reset, instant, and so on and so on. So, okay, and a little bit of your patience and we are done. Okay, and also just to, to show the the power, we we want to communicate or we want up up till now just to give an explanation. Up till now, the communication was initiated only by the attacker or by the user targeted by the attacker. Meaning that usually everything went to the print to the printer and the printer re responded. Right now, what we accomplished is. Sending some, something specific to the printer, and the printer actually have us contacted, send us something, and so on and so on. And just to demonstrate this, we do a simple ping. See, I've dumped a very specific print job, and we have the source, which is our, our printer. We were telnetting to 102, and it is giving and it's pinging our destination which is the PC running the test. Okay, so basically, just to summarize this video while it plays, um, we have like memory access, all the memory read, write, have file system access, have, uh, but full, not, not PGL based, it's like operating system based, because there are different file systems. PGL is one, it's like a virtual file system, but if you get access to the host operating system file access. It's like you get everything from that printer, right? And uh, just to show this, it's like the IP of our testing PC. Uh, so the ping goes from, we instruct the printer to ping us and send us something and do send us file and so on and so on. Uh, so we have network connectivity initiated from the printer. Uh, we have uh, memory access, file system access, basically just a couple of weeks or months and some kind of a toolkit or, uh, will be there to run something more interesting on the printer and doing very interesting stuff. Uh, unfortunately, time is up and I'm a little bit overdue. So thank you for your patience. For uh, And if you have any questions, you can find me afterwards. I don't think we have time now. Okay, thank you.